90% of the people blunder in this position. Why to play? Can you do better? I gave this position to several of my students. 90% failed. They chose the blunder. I posted this on X. Again, around 90% of the responses were, were a blunder. Now, it's your turn. White to play. Please tell me a good move for white. And please avoid the blunder. Folks, 90% of the people in this position goes queen takes a7. After queen takes a7, they want to fork with knight c6 winning material. <clears throat> Do you think that's a good move or a blunder? That's my final prompt to you. Most people, when they look at this position, they see good ideas for themselves. They see promising knight forks and double attacks and they get excited. And they tell me the move queen takes a7 and after queen takes a7, they only find themselves in a pin and their knight is not moving. The machine is not allowing them to make a move, cold shower on their head and they understand that they messed up this position. 90% blunder here with the move queen takes a7. Why? Because they feel like they are playing puzzle rush. They feel like I'm giving them an easy puzzle, easy three-ply calculation. The knight fork is visible and they will regain the piece with material up position. What is going wrong here? That's the most interesting question to my mind. Why are all these people failing in this puzzle? What is causing them, folks? Let's do it together. My observations is wishful thinking of it, right? Once they see this beautiful idea, they have confirmation bias. They exist and they seek for evidence that confirm their beliefs, just like we do in real life, right? As humans, we always do that. So this is when they lower their guards. They don't seek for counter evidence. They never ask themselves the question of, is it really working? Yes, I see this beautiful idea, but does it really work? That's what you must do at all times in chess. Like a scientist, you have to be objective at all times. So this is the first process that is failing in this case to my mind. As Dan Heisman says, when a move looks winning, you have to spend even more time double checking, triple checking everything. Because if it's winning, it's all worth investing that time. But if it's not winning, it might also be a terrible blunder like this. And black is completely winning this position. What is the second problem to my mind is the lack of board vision. People only focus on this side of the board, right? We humans have limited working memory resources. We cannot keep, you know, more than seven maybe chunks of inf information at a time in our working memories. So people only focus on this area when they are searching for a solution, obviously, because most things are here, right? Most pieces are on this side of the board. So they are completely ignoring the other side of the board. The king is not visible to them. They don't see the king on g1. It's completely irrelevant for their calculations here. And that's why they blunder. So what is the solution then, folks? What is the solution? Let's do it together. At the orientation phase, when you're first of all looking at the position, you have to just take a step back and enlarge your vision a little bit and just ask yourself which piece is placed where. All these important pieces and the king is obviously the most important piece on a chessboard. So you have to have this broader orientation phase. Look at those details because every single detail might be crucial later on when you're calculating lines. So you will keep that some part of in your working memories, that information, your king placement on G1, especially the pawn being pushed to F4. See how relevant this is? The pawn is on F4, thus the diagonal has been opened up. And this is crucial information for the whole puzzle, right? But again, it's on the other side of the board. So if you merely look at these pieces, directly jump in with your calculations, then you can totally ignore these crucial details on the king side. And the final problem to my mind is that this queen leaving or arriving on this diagonal was never relevant, right? It just feels like it's impossible for the queen to ever arrive on this diagonal and create threats. So you're totally oblivious to that idea also when you're solving this problem. 
that in the second ply, so to speak, after the second ply, the queen arrives on that spot. So obviously it's also a visualization issue, right? Because things are changing during your calculations. There are pieces moving, they are changing, dynamics are changing, and you have to be vigilant about this. Obviously, strong players probably encode this F4 move early on when they are looking at this position and they are keeping it in their in their mind. You know, this little chunk that F4 is exposing their king. They've seen similar patterns before, right? They probably lost so many games because of this diagonal at some point in their lives. So this is also sort of increasing their vigilance to my mind of being mindful of such counter tricks. So what is the best move for white? I'm inviting you, first of all, to evaluate this position as a whole, folks. Please tell me what's going on. Positional judgment, please. Orientation phase. Yes, folks, amazing knight on d4 versus a terrible beast on a7. White has the king side pawn majority. The black queen is completely tied down in guarding the terrible knight on a7. The weakness on a6, weakness on d5. Please combine all these things, folks. White king is safer than the black king. Well, the positional evaluation is telling us that white is completely winning in this position. If you ask the engine, plus 3.5 or something. White is a completely winning positional edge. So white is to be careful. White shouldn't take any risks. White, white has to double check everything before they see a winning looking line. So we can talk about some moves. For example, Gukesh played the move King F1 here. That's a very, very nice move because now he's introducing this idea, right? Because now it will be working basically for us. It's a beautiful move. And black is helpless if you pay attention. They almost cannot move a single piece. If the knight moves, then they are losing a6. If the queen moves, then they are losing the knight. There is enormous threat of queen takes a7. Well, the only move is knight c8, folks, in this position. At the very least, white can grab the pawn on a6, create one more passer on a5. This pawn is also hanging. This knight is still terrible. Black has no counterplay. The only glimpse of counterplay is queen g4, but you can check the black king, then play knight f3. You are stopping all kind of queen d1 shenanigans, and this queen is still tied down in guarding that terrible knight on c8. You're rolling your pawn, and you're winning this game easily. Notice, after king f1, Black cannot wait, because now our beautiful tactic is working, right? Look at this. This was our goal from the initial position, and now it's working. And some of you might say, but what if they go here and capture my terrible knight on the rim? Now, you tell me the winning plan here for, for white folks. I'm testing your basic pawn ending knowledge. Can you see a clear pattern for white that wins the game easily from this position? Yes, folks, in the orientation phase, remember, we talked about kingside pawn majority for white. This will be handy for you now to find the move f5 followed by e6, and the black king cannot do this and capture our knight because this pawn is rolling and we are queening very, very soon, right? Easy victory for white. And finally, some of you also on x suggested this move knight f5, but that's a terrible move, positionally speaking, because you're only exchanging your amazing knight for a terrible knight on a7. And also you're giving this activity to the black queen. Folks, please don't do this. Please don't even bother calculating this because what are you doing in this position? Your knight was an amazing piece. Blockading the pawn on d5, introducing all these ideas in the position, right? And look at this knight, just compare those pieces, right? So this trade would be a terrible trade for white. And I hope you actually understood this from its orientation phase when you were orienting yourself to this position. And that's also what this puzzle teaches us, folks. At the beginning of a puzzle or, or a position, you have to have this orientation phase. Ask yourself basic questions. You know, whose king is safer? What is the pawn structure? Peace activity, weaknesses. Talk to these things to yourself because this will orient you to the essence of the position. So you will discard certain moves out of principle, but also you won't miss such crucial details as 90% of the people missed in this position. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm waiting your feedback on YouTube. Did you fail this same puzzle in the same way? Are you one of those 90% of the people or are you an exception? Please tell me how you did in this puzzle and please tell me why people are going wrong. Maybe you can come up with different explanations than mine in this case. Okay, folks, hopefully this was useful. 
and hopefully after this video your calculation process will get better your blunder check will get better and you will convert your positions easier than this okay catch you next time bye bye